So hello and welcome to the channel. This is Caleb Jones. I'm gonna be talking about um, the House of the Dragon premiere. My thoughts are kind of scattered a bit because there was parts I, I, I found myself being lost in the episode and being lost in the fact that I enjoyed so much of it. So the episode opens up with Jaehaerys making uh, Viserys king instead of Rhaenyra's, or Rhaenyra's because she's uh, a woman and there has never been a woman on the Iron Throne. Um, and then it's followed up by a great opening shot of Rhaenyra riding a dragon throughout the King's Landing. It's kind of reminiscent of when Daenerys rode a dragon in King's Landing. The first big scene I want to talk about is the scene where it introduces Daemon. Now, Matt Smith's one of my favorite parts of the TV series, um, just because he's so charismatic. In the first scene we see, he's actually sitting on the Iron Throne and Rhaenyra walks in. He remarks that the tournament is being... that's because the tournament's being held in honor of the heir that it's a tournament for him you know full well knowing that Viserys is about to have another kid but I just thought that was a cool quote um, and we see quickly that he has established interest in some way with Rhaenyra. We then go and we see that Viserys actually has a small injury on his back with pus coming out and the doctors are tending to it and again like a lot of stuff in this episode it's set up for the future because it seems super insignificant at first. And then we get the second Daemon scene right so we have the first scene where he's sitting on the Iron Throne we get the second Daemon scene where he is basically hyping up the gold cloaks or the city watch and having them go throughout King's, uh, King's Landing and Fleet Bottom and round up people to cut off their hands, to uh, to beat them to the ground, and basically it's kind of like they're, they're trying to terrify the citizenry. Um, he says, he states that it's just criminals that they were punishing, but I'm pretty sure the implication of that scene is that it was just they were picking random people and doing that to them. So the small council meets to discuss Damon's actions, and it's actually pretty good because Damon and Otto spat back and forth, and uh, basically Otto claims that Damon needs to go back to the Vale and you know be uh, <laughs> take his wife seriously, and Damon brings up Otto's dead wife, which Otto almost like gets up and you know tries to uh, fight Damon whenever he says that, but um, part part of the council supports him. Cor Cor Coralus supports, you know, him bringing order to King's Landing, but other people on the council are just, uh, what is it called? They're unsure, but anyway, there's not a common consensus as far as Damon and if he should be punished or not. Um, besides Viserys saying that basically he's his brother, so he's not going to do anything. The tournament begins and we're introduced to a new knight, Sir Criston Cole. He's lowborn, but he keeps winning in the tourney. And we also see that Damon challenges Otto's son to a, du uh, a joust jousting in the jousting tournament. Um, and we also see that after he beats his son by tripping his horse, he asks for Alicent Otto's daughter for uh, her favor. Um, and we see him directly look at Otto when he does it. So he really, you can, you can, it's palpable to see the animosity between these two men throughout the episode, which is something I didn't notice the first time I was watching. Um, the climax of the episode, really, um, is when Queen Amea is giving birth, but it becomes apparent that either her and the baby aren't going to live. But there's a possibility for the baby, baby to live, but it would take cutting her open. Um, and so uh, Viserys. Uh, comes to the hard conclusion that that needs to happen, and then we see scenes of that happening uh, juxtaposed with scenes of Damon and Sir Kristen Cole jousting, and we actually see Chris, Sir Kristen Cole get the advantage, and he gets Damon to yield. Then we see a great cinematic shot of the funeral pyre where we zoom, zo it's zoomed in, so you first see that there's the his wife's Viserys's wife Queen Amea's corpse but then it zooms out and you see there's also uh, the corpse of Balerion the baby because the baby did not survive and uh, Rhaenyra marks I wonder if my father found happiness in the few minutes the boy was alive I will never be a son so we see now the the implication of that is you know the son was going to be the new heir and so all basically the secession uh, questions um, would have gone away, but now it's up in the air who's going to be the heir. The, sol, uh, the small council met immediately after to discuss it. Damon's listening in, and the small council is basically saying that Damon can't be the king um, because he's too cruel and different reasons. And uh, 
in the end, Viserys gets mad because the council is fighting and fighting and fighting. And he says, my wife and son are dead. I will not suffer crows to a feast on their corpses. So we see that basically people are trying to nominate who they think should be king. And Viserys just wants to be able to process that his wife and son are dead. Um, then we see some political maneuvering. Otto calls uh, for Alicent to go comfort Viserys. And we also see that Damon <laughs> throws a party, basically saying that Balerion was a ruler for a day, but now he's the heir. Um, and then we get like one of the my favorite scenes set up, actually, because throughout the episode, Damon's kind of been set up as like a rogue who's kind of on his own. But Viserys calls Damon to the throne room, basically, to see if he actually had thrown that party. Um, and Damon claims. You know, he doesn't deny the fact that he did, but he claims that throughout his brother's reign, he's been sent away, but that Otto is power hungry. He states Otto is power hungry, and he states that um, basically small council is full of leeches who are just there to see if they can sap power from Viserys because he's weak, and that he would protect him. Um, but then we uh, see that uh, Viserys actually sends him to the veil now it's an interesting thing because throughout the season you kind of you grow to understand that damon do, isn't jealous of his brother he doesn't hate his brother he actually wants what's best for his brother but he also um and he kind of sees through the bull crap of the council it sets up some really cool themes throughout the season um and damon's such a layered character that it's not just like he's a bad guy it's like he has his brother's best interest in mind um and then at the end of the episode, we see Rhaenyra uh, be appointed the heir, and we see that Damon basically has to leave uh, King's Landing. So the episode ends with him flying away and Rhaenyra being crowned ruler. The premiere is was extremely strong. I found myself uh, forgetting to take notes just to watch it, and... I've watched some TV series uh, for the channel. Um, I've been working on some stuff, or at least been thinking about stuff. Um, and the TV shows just aren't up to par with this. This is just phenomenal. It's a great show. And the premiere was, like, very engaging. And if you take it by itself outside of the horrible seasons of Game of Thrones, seven, uh, season 7 and 8, it's definitely a strong starter. So I'd give the episode, like, a 9 out of 10. Hope you've enjoyed this review. And remember to comment, like, and subscribe.